Okay, this is a fairly uh, advanced video, but this is a video showing how to take a series of parts that you're importing and apply toolpath strategies to them based on the layer name. So I have a customer that sent me this file. This is a uh, the box parts for, he does space frame cabinets, inset doors, very high-end work, and we did some training earlier, and he we got everything toolpath and set up, but I wanted to be able to do a video on it. So he sent me one, a single cabinet, and so these parts are labeled. Uh, that's the top. He does an inset, a cutout on the left end, the right end, and the bottom or the deck. And there's parts are numbered one, two, three, four for the number of parts on the sheet. And I'm guessing the number in the middle is probably the which sheet they go on, but I'm not sure. But the, this is cabinet number ten, and so they're they're all labeled and ready to go. And this is the way they came. He sent them to me. I'm not sure whether he had messed with them manually or not. So I'm going to go through that process. Right now, the parts are not all grouped together. If, you, if I tap on this, I want the machining to, to move if I nest this and change it. So I'm going to grab everything here and hit the right button and group it. And I'm going to do it the same thing here and group it. Same thing here and group it. And then the same thing here. And again, since I'm grabbing from left to right, well, it's only going to get everything that I captured in that box that be highlighted. Since this was already grouped, I didn't get the whole thing of this left panel, or the panel on the left. It's real easy to just grab and add this to it, hit the right button, and group them. So now, if I touch any part of the machining of any of these parts, whether it's a profile cut or it's a compromat cut, it's all going to come together. So uh, he got these parts from Cabinet Sense which is cabinetsensesoftware.com. It's a SketchUp add-on. So it lets you design in Cabinet Sense, and you can do cabinets, entertainment centers, closets, things like that, get elevation views with dimensions, all the things that SketchUp can do uh, and, and bring to you. And then, of course, you can print out with title blocks and things like that, depending on which version you have, um, with colors and renders and, and everything else. So you fill out a parameter set about how you want to build the cabinets. Do you want to do dado construction, but construction with screws, uh, hardware setting, uh, Cabaneos from Lamello, you know, you name it. There's all kinds of different variations there. Uh, so he does compromat screws, and we're going to drill drill through for the compromats, um, do the parameter perimeter cutout, and he does a top cutout for his tops. So this is going to be, I don't, know, I don't know, this could have been a sink cabinet, I'm not sure. Uh, but all of his ends would be have applied finished ends for or doors on them. They're very, very high-end set of cabinets. The ones that we did were walnut with dovetail drawers. And it's a very nice, nice job. I'm assuming this is the way they came in nested or it came based on his parameters on how he wanted to nest them with his spacing and where they packed and things like that. Uh, I'm just going to work from this. The idea of this video is to, to show you the, the power of using a small nest of cabinets. Don't nest the whole job where you have 20 cabinets. You have to cut, you know, uh, 18 sheets of material before you can start assembling the first box. Do the nest small and cut cut a nest and be able to start assembling that box and putting face frames on it and moving it through the shop rather than having to sort parts and stack them everywhere. Anyway, so the key to how this works is that each of these different operations has a different layer as it comes in. So after it comes in, and we've nested and it's all positioned the way we want it. Then we want to break this, this cabinet down back to its original layer. Actually, we can do the whole thing. I can just grab the whole thing, hit the right button, and say, ungroup objects back to the original layers. I cannot move this anymore. Now, each of these operations are separate operations on my 4x8 sheet. I don't want to move anything after this. But what, we, what the way this works is we can turn off or on any of these operations just by turning off or on the light bulb. Uh, and these layers are going to have come in with this name every time from cabinet sense. And then we're going to assign that a toolpath strategy in VCAR. And it will assign those automatically. So first thing we're going to do is let's do this uh, sink cutout. Uh, so we're going to pick up a profile cut. We're going to use the thickness of the material plus 30 thousandths equals. Uh, I'll do it with a quarter inch end mill. That's fine. If we look at the, the setup of this, this was going to do a quarter inch end mill at 120 inches per minute, 40 inches of plunge. That's fine, 16,000 RPMs, that all looks good. Da, da, da. Depth of cut is uh, 0 0.18, uh, 125, so an eighth inch, the radius of the bit. That's fine, I can be more aggressive if I want. 
I could change this by editing the number of passes, set it down to five, maybe. If I hit the compression cutter, again, I, these are just different tooling setups that you want to do to see in this material, how does it cut? Um, if it's not a compression cutter or it's, you know, we have to look at the number, the passes, the pass depth. If it is a compression cutter, we need this first one to be deeper so that it's past the up spiral part if I want a good top surface of the material. So I'm just going to assume this is a, a down spiral and we're just going to go to town. Um, I'm going to stay outside the parameters. I don't need to do a separate last pass on this interior part. I could add tab, tabs to it. And I'll just set it to four and add them. That's fine. They're in a good place. I can clean them up nicely. And quickly, I'm going to add a ramp to it over one inch and have it calculate. Now, rather than calculate, we're going to go separate and go to this selector here. And this selector, we're going to tell it of any closed vectors, I want to associate a toolpath if it is called the interior cutout. So close vectors, associate with toolpath, and you're going to forget to do this sometime, and it won't do it automatically. This is what links them all together. If it's called interior cutout, I want it to do this toolpathing strategy and then calculate it. It warns us it's going to cut through, and that's fine. It's expected. Turn on both views. And if I reset the preview, um, I'm sorry, I had, other, I had other operations on here before. I'm going to delete all. I'm sorry, I just went right, right through it again. So just select it again. I've got all the same information. Add a ramp, add tabs, click the tabs, do four of them, add them. They're in a good spot. And select. Associate with toolpath. This is not stay on. I have to kick it on every time, and that's fine. There we go. It's going to cut through, and there's our operation reset and preview. There it is, and we've got the tabs there, so that's fine. So and now I want to do this outside profile cut. So again, it's a profile cut, and I use the same thing. I'll set it to six passes. Again, I, that's not the point of the video. I'm going to do a separate last pass because I'll, if this is a frameless cabinet, I'd have to do some edge panning on it. So I'm going to oversize it by 20 thousandths and, and then have it come back in. So all the five passes, it's going to be out here, an extra 20 thousandths. And then on the final pass, it's going to come in and cut the witness lines off. I will add tabs. And I can edit them. I need to select which. I need to select manually, not manually this time. Um, I need to add ramps and then use the selector and just do the fast cuts. Associate with it, and it's highlighted everything. We close it and then calculate. Now, we haven't done tabs, so I want to add those tabs, and I will do that. I'll show you how that happens later uh, after we do the drilling operation. So, again, we can have it render it, but we don't need to. So I'm going to do the drilling operations next. Uh, this time, the cut depth, uh, I think he did 10 millimeters deep. Yeah, so he's got some hinge clips that are going to be 10 millimeters deep. That's uh, 393. I'm going to do 0.394, and I'll use the same drill he sent. Uh, that's fine. I'll have it use a peck routine, so it's going to go down a little bit. It's going to go down to 0.196, and then come all the way out of the material, clear the swart, and then go back down. Uh, we want it to go quickly, uh, so the plunge speed is going to be is picked up pretty high. Um, yeah, that's not fast enough. Uh, so he did to slow down his spindle speed. That's good. Again, we can go from roughly 5,000 on the SC1 spindle. Uh, we tried some different feeds and speeds um, on the walnut plywood that he was using, and he found a speed that he liked, and assuming it's consistent with this tool. Uh, but we're going to make this faster. I'm going to set this faster to roughly 1,000 millimeters per minute. That's roughly 40 inches per minute in plunge rate, and that'll work better to get in and out. Um, but here we do 43. Uh, use the selector, and I want it to do associated with tool path and hinge cups. And we'll close it and calculate it, and it'll show up here. That's good. Boom. Boom, boom. Uh, somewhere in the process, we've lost a hinge hole here. I'm sure that came from him manipulating stuff. Um, I've seen the output on this. I have several customers using it that looks great. Uh, so we'll also do the drill through for the compromats. We'll do this. 
and it's going to be the thickness of the material, thickness plus 1030 equal. Same tool. He does applied finished end, so if this blows out a little bit because it's a not a brad point, that's fine. And this may have multiple pecs. We're not going to worry about it. I'm not going to dwell. And I'll select it using associate tool path and compromise. And then calculate. It's going to drill through, and that's correct. And so we have our compromise drilling there. So that looks good. Those are the operations that we have. So I can tell it to save this to a template, save all visible tool paths to a template, and then where do we want to put it? Um, it'll open up a directory list and then send a vector. I'll hit T for tool paths, templates. And I'm going to put this in as cabinet template. Cabinet tool path template. If I see it later, I'll move it is. And I will save that. And then we will apply that next. Okay, so now if we open the job again, this is the same nest. We haven't done anything to it. Um, and it is missing some boring here. That's probably in the way he sent it. No, no question about it. Uh, so then we'll load a template. And we're going to load it from where we had it, uh, just to another vector toolpath templates. And we will open that up, and it, it applies it. Now, when I name these and I say, I'm going to save them again, it's better to give a better name because this doesn't really tell a whole lot. But if I recalculate all of the tool paths, it says, hey, there's no tabs defined on that first operation that it did. And that's correct. Um, I haven't yet. And it's going to cut through the material correct. And it's going to cut through again for the drilling operation. And all the tool paths are done. So that's ready if we look at the machining to reset the preview and then preview all. That does the cutout, does the drilling, and then it did the didn't. I need to change these. So it's out of order. So I need, I should have fixed this before. I'm going to take the drill, the profile cutout and move it down. And I'm going to fix the names. So this, this is the, what they call fast cuts. I'm going to rename this uh, profile cutout 0.25. And this was the compromats. Real compromise. And this is renamed. This was drill clips. And this was renamed. This is the top insert cutout. These are better names. So this, and I've ordered them the way that I want, and then I save them back. Get them all as well. I'm going to save them back to that same template. Do I want to replace it? Yes. It's going to have better names. This will be in the proper order this time. I'll turn this on. I'll delete all these tool paths. So there's nothing there. It's just the raw job as it comes in. And then I'll apply it, load it. Boom, boom, boom. The names make sense. We tell it to calculate it. It warns us it's going to cut through. And I'm just hitting enter and getting through it. And we have all the operations done in the order that we want them. So it did the drilling and then it did the so that's the setup. It's fairly involved. There's plenty of videos on it, but that is a strong way to bring in common named items. Um, I have sign makers that do the same thing. A plastics distributor that does this because uh, he'll sometimes draw or manipulate the layer names in AutoCAD uh, before he brings them to the part. Now he can have it automatically set up, and that's what we did in the last training that I did with him. So uh, that's a great setup and works really well. And if I wanted to put the tabs in, all I would do is go to that profile cutout operation. It's highlighted them already. Tell it to put on tabs. Tell it how many I want to put. And there they are. Now the tabs are good. I close out. I 
come down, I tell it to calculate. Now it's adjusting for tabs. And I'll recalculate and maximize this view and preview all. Reset and preview all. The sink cut out by the top, the drilling operations, and then coming through and cutting. And when we look at this thing from the bottom, we see our tabs. So it is very quick to go ahead and do this per nest. And a nest could be one cabinet, could be five cabinets, or whatever you want for multiple sheets. Not a question. Just have it apply this to all of the operations. So that's a lot to it. Um, but that's bringing in parts. This particular op option was from Cabinet Sense. Um, but that's assigning toolpath operations to layers as they come in. I'm Eric Schiller with Yeti Tools Southeast. Um, I've got the YetiSmartBench.com. And I introduced the machine in 2019. I'd be happy to help you with anything that I can if you're in, uh, in the U.S. or Cayman Islands. Mexico, the customers all over. Thank you so much.